<clears throat> Our spotlight today is going to be the North Pinellas chapter of the League of Women Voters, represented by Karen, I pronounced it earlier, <laughs> Corinna. Karinja. Karinja. Thank you for being here, Karen. Good morning, everyone. It's nice for us to be here. We were here a number of years ago during another election season, and we hope to continue that tradition in the future. As you know, the League is very committed to education of our citizens. As a former and retired teacher, that's extremely important to me. And our efforts with you today in terms of moderating and timing this candidate's forum is part of our efforts at that education. We have um, very little time today to do this, but it's going to be very informative. If any of you happen to have any questions that you have not yet turned in, if you would raise your hand and somebody would come by with a three by five card and then collect that from you. Okay, we are set to go. Thank you. Thank you very much, Karen. You're welcome. Now the program. Oh, we're doing so great. We're, we're above schedule, that's fine. Kath, Kathleen Woods Malowski, Masowski is here to represent the League of Women Voters and run this program for you, and I'm going to go sit down. And good morning again. As Karen said, uh, the League's uh, role here today is related to our goal of education. We are not advocating for or against any candidate or position that he might take on any of the questions raised by the DCO membership. My name is Kathy Woods Masowski. I'm a long-term League member, but new to both the League and Dunedin. However, my husband and I represent the local League at these monthly meetings when we, as snowbirds, are here. As I think all of you know, the city of Dunedin operates under a nonpartisan commission manager form of local government. The commission is made up of four commissioners and a mayor who are elected by the registered voters under a staggered system. This year, there are three candidates up for election to the city commission. One, Deborah Kynes is here today, but running unopposed and is not involved in today's proceedings. The candidates for seat number four on Dunedin City Commission, Jeff Gao and John Tornga, the incumbent, are with us and have agreed to the following. Mr. Gao won the opportunity to choose the speaking order. He will be the last on the agenda to give his closing statement. Mr. Tornga will therefore speak first with his opening remarks. The opening and closing statements of each man will be no longer than one minute. League timekeepers are with us today to keep us all in line. They will alert each speaker as appropriate when he has, as the case may be, one minute, 30 seconds, or 15 seconds left to speak. A stop sign will be raised at the appropriate time and that sign means what it says, gentlemen. <laughs> the questions for today were provided in advance by your officers, by some of your members, and more have been submitted today. The questions are being vetted by League members who will eliminate any that are personal or offensive or partisan, and I don't think there have been any. Some questions will be combined. Obviously, in the 30-minute period, uh, not every question can be asked, and certainly not everyone can be answered. But I'm very happy to say that our candidates today have agreed to stay on to answer any additional questions you may have uh, after uh, our, the closing of this meeting. The timekeepers will alert me when it's within five minutes for closing statement. Each candidate will then have one minute to summarize. I ask that we all be respectful of one another. We will not show any signs of auditory agreement or disagreement or disapproval of statements or answers by the candidates. 
we will applaud them both at the end of time of the time together and I'm sure they will join me in uh, in applauding you so we will now begin uh, with Mr. Uh, Toringa and this is the first question what do you recommend doing in order to bring bipartisanship back to public life I'm sorry oh thank you <laughs> ah, we're off to a good start <laughs> <laughs> and I'm willing to give that time up. Good morning and welcome to all of you to the DCO. And I want to thank the DCO, the Dunedin Council of Organizations, for putting this event on. Most of you know who I am, so I'm not going to talk about myself right now. I'm going to talk a little bit about you. First of all, here we are in a national registry, the Dunedin Golf Club. And everyone knows how proud I am of that. It gives our Scottish culture, it gives our Scottish heritage, and it is extremely historical, and it is, of course, a national registry. This leads me to another comment that I wanted to make. We spent last Wednesday at an event called the Dunedin Commons. The people there were so delighted to be in Dun here in Dunedin, and the reason why they said they loved Dunedin was the people here in Dunedin. We have two more of these events just to give you an idea of what we've been working on. The next one coming up is going to be the Fenway Hotel. How about that? And the following one to that is going to be the International Center for the Taoist. And we're so excited and delighted by that. So I'm very proud to be an American. I'm very proud to be a Floridian. And I'm very proud to be in a Dunedin can. Good morning, everyone. Uh, most of you don't know who I am, so I'm going to have to tell you a little bit about myself. But first, thank you for the D DCO for putting this event on this morning, and thank you for the League of Women Voters for hosting this event. Uh, again, my name is Jeff Gow, and I'm a candidate for City of Dunedin Commission, seat four. I was born and raised in this community, and I'm extremely passionate about Dunedin. Uh, I tell you that I'm the most passionate. There are actually 40,000 people who are passionate about Dunedin, and John did get that right. It's not about me, it's about you, it's about the community. Uh, I am civic oriented. Uh, my, my father taught civics at the junior high school, and it's kind of my orientation. I have 20 years experience in the financial services industry. I was CEO, and I'm talking fast because I've got 15 seconds left. Uh, as part of my CEO, my leadership skills are I'm vision driven, I'm results focused, and solution oriented. And so by that, I mean that if you fail to plan, uh, you plan to fail, and if you get it right the first time. And I'm Jeff Gow, running for City Dunedin C4. Thank you very much. You can stay right here because you're going to get the first question. Good. And you already Yay. know what it Excited is. Excited about so. that. What to, I think I can, can you hear me? Yeah. So that we don't have to keep going back and forth. Okay. <clears throat> what do you recommend doing in order to bring bipartisanship back to public life? Two minutes. Two minutes on that. All right. Uh, to bring, you know, that is the beauty of local politics in Dunedin. It really isn't about party affiliation. It really is about the residents. It's about the community. And that really is. It, it leaves all the state issues, the, the national issues, uh, where, where they belong. I think what Dunedin really needs to do to create that bipartisan approach is to actually bring all those who are committed to the community uh, together. We got residents, we have business owners, and we actually have city staff. And I think it would be incumbent upon all of us to get together and figure out exactly what Dunedin's identity is, which is the purpose that I'm running. I'm a little concerned about the development, and I think development needs to be managed, and it, any development that occurs needs to fit in with the identity and the characteristic of Dunedin. The number of residents that I've spoken with uh, feel that they aren't being listened to. We've heard them talk out about Hammock Park. We've heard them talk out about paid parking. We've heard them talk out about the development. And it seems that nobody listens unless they are 40 feet deep at the commission meetings uh, talking. And so it's a matter of getting the residents involved in the process earlier on. You need to understand, we just went through a vision session, but you really don't hear about that vision much anymore. It's all about the development. It's all about Dunedin. I'm concerned that Dunedin is becoming any town USA. 
Uh, Dunedin is known for its identity. <clears throat> Actually, Dunedin is a destination uh, community. It's, it, uh, people come from all over, not just Clearwater and Palm Harbor, but they come from St. Pete. They come from um, Tampa. They come from Plant City. And they come to Dunedin for a reason. And I'm concerned that we are losing that identity. We're not unique anymore, and we're becoming any, any town USA, and we are much better than that. So it's just a matter of bringing everybody together and figuring out what Dunedin's identity is. Thank you. Well, that's interesting. Um, uh, an interesting question. Uh, I do not perceive us as any town USA, and I don't think any one of the commissioners, the mayor, nor anyone else that's involved in the city feels that. We've got such special people here in Dunedin. This is an exact example of why we have that. I want to just bring up something I had said earlier, and that is at the, at the uh, Dunedin Commons, uh, ribbon cutting and at their presentation. The main reason for success of the Dunedin Commons, which is an incredible asset uh, to Dunedin, and will bring, will bring a lot to Dunedin, was the fact of the success of Dunedin as announced by the president of Prime America. And he said it was the people and the staff of Dunedin that made Dunedin what it was, and he loved what Dunedin was. Now, most of the people at that function, I'll, I'll tell you all the people that I spoke with, talked about how much they loved Dunedin. All of my friends, of course, loved Dunedin, and it goes on and on. We've had the selection uh, by, by the Fenway to, to be a, 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 grand, a grand hotel for us here. Uh, we have so many assets in Dunedin, but really the asset is in the people. And we talked about the nonpartisan side. Um, one of the biggest things I get while I'm walking is, what party do you belong to? And I tell them this is nonpartisan. And so I've come up with the name now, after all of the questions that I've been asked. I don't tell them I'm an American. You all know how proud I am to be an American. You know my background. Most of you do know that. I don't tell them about being a Floridian. I live here. But I tell them I'm a Dunedin can, because Dunedin can be a self-actualizing city and is becoming one as we speak. Thank you. You can stay right here and answer this question. What is your position on the city's reserve fund and what is your plan to maintain or and or improve upon those reserves? We have in the city of Dunedin a set policy for each one of our reserves. As most of you know, we operate, uh, well, really two sets of, of approaches. One is called an enterprise fund and one is called a general fund. The enterprise fund takes care of itself, but we balance it each year. It does have a reserve requirement, and we have changed some of those recently. Um, but we maintain the reserve requirements. For example, we'll say a reserve requirement here from the operating funds is 15%. So at the end of the year, when we do the budgeting, we hope to see a 15% or above, or a justification of how we're going to get there. And that's how somehow how sometimes your rates are set. In the general fund, we do the same, and as you'll notice, we have a balanced budget each year. So that's very nonpartisan, and, uh, and we intend to, well, we will be always that, a balanced budget. Um, the reserve funds um, have, have had a lot of attention paid to them, both by staff over time and by the Board of Finance. We have an incredible group of people within this city the number is way up in the 30s of organizations that we have that support the city. And those organizations, I see many of you here that are on those organizations. There's even organizations that have been developed here that are supporting Dunedin, exclusive of anything that was set up by Dunedin. They just kind of exist. Some of you, in fact, belong to organizations that we don't list and are always in support of Dunedin. I have I would challenge anyone anywhere USA to match what we have here in support from our not only residents but from our entire community as well as from our visitors 
We have visitors that come here and come here and come here and keep coming here and call this their home or second home. Thank you. Again, the question has to do with the uh, reserve fund in your position. Before I get to that, just the comment that every member of the commission doesn't think that there's a problem with development. That's why I'm running. Uh, the, the reserve fund. I actually currently work for the city of Clearwater and I, um, I do accounting for them in their solid waste department recycling. I analyze the recyclables or commodities and that is an enterprise fund. So I do have some familiarity with reserves and how government accounting works and things of that nature. Um, and I think actually John got it right. It's a matter of just balancing that out. You've got your reserves to make sure you maintain your reserves and you just, you manage your expenses to the revenue that's coming in. And that's basically it. Thank you very much. Stay right here. <laughs> is this working? Yes, it is. Okay. <clears throat> it's the year 2030. What three great things are in place in Dunedin that were in the planning stages in 2019? That's actually a great question. Uh, what, what I'd like to see in, in 2030, or uh, my vision for Dunedin, is one of coming together. Um, I mentioned that I'm concerned about development. I think that development can be balanced with other types of economic growth. It, by the year 2030, I'd like us to expand our destination as a community, right now we are a destination community, as I mentioned before, people come from all over to our downtown. I think we can expand that destination concept by, coming, by becoming a destination for the arts. We have a fabulous fine arts community, with the, uh, it's anchored by the, uh, the Dunedin Fine Arts Center. We have various artists in the community, our visual arts are strong, uh, our performing arts. I'm on the board of the Dunedin Scottish Arts Foundation. And so that supports the, the, the pipe bands in the area. And you all know that we are world champions, if you didn't know that. So uh, kudos to them. Uh, <clears throat> and I, so I'd like to expand on that arts program by bringing in um, theater arts. And I think that over time and development of that, we can have something similar to what the Capitol Theater has in downtown Clearwater and become that destination for the arts. I think we can be a destination for clean energy. I think that we can be that county that people look to that other cities want to emulate. I think there's a segment of our society, the younger generation, that first find a community that is focused on clean energy and then and that's where they want to move. I think we need to focus on our small businesses. We are very proud of our small businesses. Uh, we have an incubator for small business. I think we blow that thing up and just really be, become that creative community where people that have ideas can come and share their ideas and really grow our small businesses. And um, I'm done. Thank you very much. Mr. Torinda, it's 2030. Could you repeat the question? Sure. What, you three, do. what three great things are in place in Dunedin in 2030 that were in the planning stages in 2018? So a direct answer to that question specifically. Let's start with number one, the Toronto Blue Jays. I know the mayor and the entire commission as well as the staff led by our abbreviated, I have an abbreviation for our city manager now, it's OCM, our city manager, and there's a story behind that, have worked diligently to make this happen. And it won't be in too many more days than we're going to be seeing some additional activity in that area. And we are going to be going forward with, of course, as you all know, with a tremendous activity for the Toronto Blue Jays. The advantage of that is, well, that makes us a sports town, doesn't it, a little bit. Not only that, but we have the national team of Canada here in Dunedin, and they have been here for a period of time. In addition to that, we have the Talas here. And their international center is currently in Toronto. Uh, you're going to see a little bit of a change there. I think you're going to see an international center. You will see an international center here in Dunedin. That is what's going on currently, and that's what's going to be happening. What's going on, the second thing, will be a city 
Hall an additional set of plans for how we're going to be doing development and developing. And that's being worked on by our staff diligently under the leadership of our city manager and direction and assistance and input from the, your commission. Number three, and let me just put it this way. We are reaching out to all of our residents in our community and we have a city of Dunedin's epic goals, and I'll read the first one, create a vibrant cultural experience that touches the lives of our community and visitors. Dunedin can and will. Um, you're gonna have to stay up here a minute. I just had to grab another set of questions. Downtown Dunedin is a legally designated community redevelopment area. Each and every member of the city commission serves by default as a member of the CRA board, and their actions are held to account by the statutes governing the Community Redevelopment Act. Where do you see the future of our downtown CRA under your leadership? Well, I'm going to answer that question by starting with the first statement. Um, under my leadership, I'm going to talk about our leadership because we have two forms that are providing the leadership for our CRA. We have a CRA advisory community of which I have served on previously. As a matter of fact, you probably saw me in the television ad about the carts, the carting, because that was the time when we got the approval for the carts, the golf carts that, that zip around our uh, livable and likable Dunedin. We have a CRA, and that CRA, by default, but not by default, we met last night, we met for at least an hour solid, and perhaps an hour and a half, on some of the really important things that are coming before the CRA. Not only did we meet, but then there's a CRA advisory committee that's shall I say, loaded with incredible people that continue to work on that CRA. It's 217 acres, and our downtown is in the CRA. CRA is a community redevelopment agency, and we get additional funds that come from the county, come from the county tax that comes in to support the CRA. So the CRA gets a little bit of a boost. And that was to create, if you'll recall, what Dunedin downtown area looked like in 1980. You want to go to 1985? Go ahead. You want to go to 1990? Go ahead. But that's the CRA. And right now you can see where we stand. And again, we are having a adjustment and adjustment will be provided shortly by staff to us and we're well aware of what the issues are in, in that to create an even more delightful Dunedin from a development side. You will be very proud of what you see. I will assure you. Thank you. And Mr. Gao, where do you see the future of our downtown CRA under your leadership? Where I see the CRA going is a little more transparency, a little more vision and planning on, on where it is. I find it interesting that we talk about the, the beauty of Dunedin and talk about development now when all that I see are lines of people that are screaming about Dunedin and it goes back to the identity of Dunedin. Uh, as long as that, that development is managed and fits into the identity and the characteristic of Dunedin, there are reasons why you moved here. There are reasons why you have your mortgage here. This is reason if you lived here long enough that you raised your children here. Dunedin has something special about it, something special about its identity. That's what drew you here. And so that's why people come from all over. The fact that you have development that is for people that don't even actually live here yet. And I know that I'm going to say an ugly word, but I'm going to talk about Clearwater Beach. And the fact that when I grew up on Clearwater Beach, um, uh, it, it was fine. It was a local place to go. 
uh, you enjoyed it. If you ask the merchants how are things on Clearwater Beach today, they're going to say fabulous, hotels are full, uh, restaurants are full, things are great. If you ask the city commission how are things on Clearwater Beach, they're going to say great, tax revenue is up, fabulous. If you ask the residents of Clearwater, if you ask those people that have their mortgages in Clearwater, that raise their kids in Clearwater, how are things on Clearwater Beach, they're going to tell you, I don't know, I haven't been in years. And that's what I'm afraid of in downtown Dunedin that we've got something that's unique. Down, downtown Dunedin is vibrant, it's active, it's inclusive, it's diverse. We've got, we've got a plan, we've got our identity. I just wish the commission would protect that identity as well as they promote it. That we're gonna promote it to become any town USA. And we're not any town USA, we're better than that. Our logo used to be Dunedin delightfully different. They changed it to now as Dunedin, home of Honeymoon Island, which is just kind of a location. It might as well say Dunedin, just north of Clearwater. Dunedin is better than that. Thank you. Uh, a change of gears here. In the city of Dunedin, we have a large and proud veteran population. If you yourself are a veteran and have served our country and honor, can you convey those experiences along with what you're doing now to continue to work with and support our veterans? I am not a veteran. Uh, my father was a veteran. Uh, he was in the Marines for nine years. Uh, he was at an embassy in Greece. He met my mother there. So they met in Greece, got married in, in Egypt. Not too bad for one person from Ohio and the other from Missouri, the Show Me State. Uh, part of my, my father's time in the Marine Corps was at Camp Lejeune. And after he uh, got out of the service, he was sick most of his adult life. And he died of ALS when I was 17. And my mother to this day contributes that to his time in the service, in his time at, at the camp. As a matter of fact, she still today receives widow benefits because of his time at Camp Lejeune. So because of his experience, unfortunately, um, I was not allowed to serve. Although growing up, she'd tell you that I loved Admiral Farragut, and if I could get in a uniform, I would. <laughs> I have a brother-in-law who is in law enforcement. So any type of service that anybody gives to our towns, our counties, our states, our country, should be applauded, and it's well-deserved. Whether you're in the military, whether you're in the police academy, whether you're in the police service, whether you're a firefighter, they all deserve the utmost respect, and we should hold them in that high esteem. Thank you. Uh, we are, have a large and proud veteran population here. If you yourself are a veteran and have served our country in honor, with honor, can you convey these experiences along with what you are doing now? continue to work with and support our veterans? Two-part question. If I'm a veteran, what did I do? And what do I do now to support the veterans? I really would rather answer the second part, but just so there's clarification sake, for clarification sake. Yes, I am a veteran. I'm a proud United States Marine. I see some Marines in here today, Semper Fi. Semper Fi to all of the veterans that are in here. I hold a veteran as well as all that serve in any part of the service of our country and we have the sheriff's contingency back there of which I'm very a strong supporter of. Of course I'm endorsed by the firefighters because of their service. I salute each one of you. Yes I did serve in Vietnam lots of experiences. I've had tremendous experiences in the United States Marine Corps. I'm very proud of that. But no, now let me switch to the part that I really want to talk about. What do I do for the veterans that are here today? First of all, most of you probably know that I'm on the board of directors of Honor Flight. Uh, we fly World War II veterans and now Korean veterans up to Washington, D.C. Free of, free of charge. I see folks in here that have actually flown with us and I see folks in here that have flown their parents up with us, and I'm very proud of that activity. I'm a lifetime member of the VFW and a member of the American Legion. I'm a member of the Military Officers Association of America, and I see some of my fellow members 
here today, and thank you for being here. I'm a very strong supporter of the veterans. I, here we go with the word I, I helped form the United States Military Veterans Committee for the city of Dunedin. And the purpose of that is that whatever happens and occurs or has anything to do with veterans, it goes through that committee first. I'm very proud of being a veteran. Thank you. The Alt-19 uh, Curlew intersection, as well as the intersection of the trail and Skinner Boulevard are important issues today. Would you please address these issues uh, and speak of the significance and explain what the issues are and what possibly can be done under your, or as you would say, our leadership? Well, I'm going to go fast on this one, and I'll throw out a few terms and words, but you can ask me about this later. I had the incredible opportunity of, of representing Dunedin on Forward Pinellas. Forward Pinellas, there's two parts of Forward Pinellas, forget the phone part. Forward Pinellas represents what's called the MP, M, P, MPL, which is a Metropolitan Planning Organization. We're involved in transit and transportation. Um, I'm, of course, also a member of the Board of Directors of PSTA and on the Executive Planning and Legislative Committee. Uh, most of you know what I now call Alt-19. I call that the Dunedin Cultural Road. You'll see a lot more about that coming up soon. That's in the planning phase. I suggest that you stay really closely attached to that. I've also served on the, on the Pinellas Trail Security Task Force. And I'm very, very much aware of some of the problems of transportation and, tra and traffic as it relates to the trail. As it relates to the Curlew intersection, we are all very concerned about that. We've had people out to look at that. It's going to be a complicated uh, transition if we attempt to do anything there. There's such a thing called a Michigan left. And if you don't know what that is, I don't have enough time to tell you what that is. But it means you take a right and you come back and go straight. And things, all of those kinds of things are being looked at, including any one of the new things that are being brought up by the Department of Transportation that will assist making multimodal transportation effective here in Dunedin? And that's a great question because that's one of my major functions and focuses right now as far as I'm concerned, and that is complete streets. We received a $100,000 grant for planning, and now the city manager, OCR, OCM, is now putting in for a $1 million grant for Skinner, and that would be for complete streets. Complete streets simply means multimodal. Anybody and anyone can go on it safely. Thank you. Mr. Gaw, the Alt-19 Curlew intersection, the Skinner uh, the Trail, the Skinner Boulevard. What would you like to do? What do, would you like to see done? What will be accomplished under your leadership? Actually, what, under my leadership, what I'd like to do is actually what John said, just continue what Ford Pinellas is doing. Uh, the concern for Alternate 19 and Skinner Boulevard and Curly Road all have to do with traffic. And on Alternate 19, a majority of that traffic isn't even Dunedin traffic, it's passed through traffic. They're coming from Largo to Tarpon Springs or vice versa from Tarpon Springs to Largo. So the idea is to slow traffic down, make it a cultural corridor, and make it accessible to other forms of transportation, golf carts, bike lanes, walking paths, and just create and just make it a much safer, much community-oriented street. The same is true for, for Skinner, right? It's right now it's four lanes with a common turn lane, making it five lanes. The idea there is to narrow the streets down, slow down the traffic, and incorporate other forms of transportation. I think when they narrow down those streets, Instead of making that narrowing green space, I think if you add angled parking on the road, that will assist with any parking concerns that we have. Uh, but the idea is to make neighborhoods safer, make the road safer. And by, by safer, it's also a matter of golf carts have their own community. They wave to each other. Boaters, when they pass in the sound, they wave to each other. We don't have that luxury in cars. We're all kind of self-enclosed and going where we, we need to go. So incorporating other forms of transportation, whether it's golf carts or, or bikes or walking paths, strengthens the community from a social standpoint and a physical standpoint, right? We all get our steps in and our cholesterol goes down. We'll be known as that community. 
but the idea is to make the neighborhood safer, slow the traffic down, and as far as the intersection of Curlew, uh, there are three different types um, of improvements to do to that. Um, I did hear about the Michigan left, and at first I did go, I'm sorry, what? I'm sorry, born and raised in Dunedin, what's the Michigan left? And I actually heard several people go, no, you really need to see it. It, it does work. So I am open to that as well. Thank you. And what can the commission do to improve communication with residents? This is a general question, but the, the uh, author stated we want to know what is happening before something is decided, not after. I think the commission should listen and listen some more and listen some more and understand. I just call it active listening. You're not just hearing somebody, but you're understanding, you're comprehending what they're saying. I think, as I mentioned before, that the cityans have already spoken out. And I talked about three specific issues. I talked about Hammock Park. That was two years ago. I've talked about paid parking, and I talked about the development. We could talk about those as three separate issues, but you can also put them under the umbrella of just Dunedin's identity and what the residents are saying. I think now they're starting to just get to the feeling that they're not understanding. When I, talk, when I knock on doors uh, and ask people how they feel about the development, Either they're upset about it or they're apathetic and go, there's nothing we can do about it, it's out of our hands. So they feel that the commission isn't listening to them. Uh, what we like for our state legislators and our U.S. Uh, representatives and senators are town hall meetings. We beg them for town hall meetings. So that's something that I'd like to incorporate, is to have town hall meetings and to get people together, share with them in advance. I think making the residents part of the process uh, helps with the improvement of the community and it's just a matter of getting them involved sooner and listening to them It's not it's not my town. It's not their town. It's our town And so it's just a matter of I've got an idea. You've got an idea Let's put all those ideas together and come up with one solution. I'm solution oriented. I'd like to um, uh, not um, I, I like to look at all ideas and consider everything and just come up with the best solution so that's just a part of it. I think that uh, we can also do a better job through social media and Facebook. I understand that not everybody is on social media and Facebook, but just our, our TV uh, and just promoting exactly what's going on. You shouldn't have to wait for a commission meeting to find out what's on the agenda. Thank you. Mr. Tornda, what can the commission do to improve communication with residents? The author would like to know what is happening before something is decided rather than after. Here is what the Commission and staff are doing about that currently. We have a Citizens Academy. You can come to the graduation on October 30th if you wish. Um, this is a group of people that have gone through all aspects of our city, all the departments of our city. Uh, we have two deans that head that up under the auspices and, uh, and watchful eye of our city manager. That is going to be offered to others who wish to join in on that, and we do have a number of people who would like to be on the, on the Citizens Academy. We were desirous of that for a period of time. We have also, uh, specifically as it relates to myself, uh, the mayor as well as, as the commissioner has asked me some time ago to meet with the city manager and I've been including a presentation to the city manager about how we can in fact even communicate even more and perhaps more frequently with our committees and with our boards and I'm not doing that purposely right now until after the election uh, because I don't want it to become politi politicized in, in any shape manner or form and, and I'm going to do that regardless of what happens so um, we do need to communicate more. Um, I started in my first year as a commissioner and uh, ended up in, uh, in, in some, some yelling sessions, listening to some yelling sessions at us where I recommended we do town halls and we need to do more town halls. It doesn't mean everybody comes to the town hall and we do have social media. And so we are increasing our emphasis on social media and we are willing to talk with anyone at any given point in time and we do want to bring these things out in front of all of our community including our visitors as we move forward on any issue that might affect the community thank you
and I have been sig uh, signaled that we have five, approximately five minutes left in the program. And so there it is, therefore it is time for closing remarks. And since Mr. Bob is the lucky one to be the last to speak, uh, Mr. Tornda, it's your opportunity to take one minute to give your uh, closing remarks. Well, here we are at the end. Here I am in front of people that I know from all the organizations that I'm familiar with, having served on this organization as a board member and, of course, as your first vice president. I have been very active in a number of areas within the city of Dunedin. You, most, of, most of you know what those are. Lots of committees, lots of boards prior to becoming a commissioner. And now as a commissioner, I am extremely I feel I am extremely experienced and knowledgeable with the organizations that we will be working with and utilizing to make Dunedin can self-actualize and become even better yet while retaining the feeling and the vibration that we have from all of our residents, community and visitors as they visit Dunedin. Dunedin can and will be even better in the future. Thank you. Mr. Gow, the stage is yours. I talk about the identity of Dunedin, and I talk about how long that I've lived here, and I've talked about how passionate I am about this community. My concern is for Dunedin, and what I hope to change is the idea of creating a true identity that everybody believes in. Uh, you've heard me talk about the development. I've talked to several residents who are all concerned about the development. At one point, Dunedin was voted most charming city. I don't believe that we'll ever get that designation again. Uh, at some recent commission meetings, you've heard them talk about the sign ordinance and how proud they are of our A-frame signs, our sandwich board signs. They must have used the word quaint a thousand times. That's all you heard was quaint charm. Again, I don't see that in the development that they were having, but I think that's capable in Dunedin. Uh, they talked about the historic preservation ordinance that they have and how sad it is for a sense of loss you have when you see an older building go down. I feel that same sense of loss when you see a, a building go up against something that was precious. And so you can feel loss on both sides. I'm Jeff Gow, City of Dun Dunedin Commission, seat four, and I approve this message. <laughs> Okay, in addition to thanking my fellow leaguers, on behalf of them and myself, I would like to thank the audience, the candidates, and the DCO for organizing this event, and especially uh, Rebecca Wellborn for being so patient and helpful. I hope that we all can work together at a, on another occasion.